welcome back to Know How Things Work. I'm your host, Siren, and today we're gonna cover all things related to fasting. And why? Because in four and a half years of doing different treatments for chronic Lyme for myself, I have not had any treatment that worked better, more rapidly, to reduce symptoms, especially the hard to get symptoms, the, the nervous system issues, the, the buzzing in the body, the ringing in the ears, as I have with, with fasting. We have this whole thing backwards. I certainly know that I did. I mean, none of my doctors knew anything about the science of fasting, let alone autophagy, which is the mechanism of fasting, of cleaning your cells out when you go into a fast. It's what the body does to heal. And that won the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2016. None of my doctors knew anything about that. They, in fact, warned me that I would die if I did a fast. I, one doctor told me that he, first of all, said he didn't know anything about fasting. Ding, ding, ding! And then he proceeded to give me his opinion on fasting, which was that I would die if I did it. Um, that maybe an Olympic athlete in the peak of his performance could take a day or two off and be okay. Okay, all of that's wrong. It's the most profound healing that I've had in four and a half years of treating for chronic Lyme disease. I've never had anything move more rapidly forward, especially through the tough symptoms, like the nervous system buzzing in the body, the ringing in the ears, the diabetic aspects, the diabetic neuropathy in the hands and feet, all of those things. So we're gonna cover all that, but we have a few things to uncollapse first. So what I'm gonna do is I'll tell you my story, the benefits I got on doing a 21 day distilled water fast which is, by the way, exactly what you're thinking it is. I pretty much just drank distilled water for 21 days. And not only didn't I die, but I got a lot better. <laughs> so we're gonna cover that. Then I'm gonna talk you out of doing that, <laughs> I'm gonna, or at least right away, because we're gonna distinguish the different types of fasting. So you've probably heard of intermittent fasting or juice fasting, and I'm gonna distinguish that from pure fasting. And, and we'll show where these have their different places in life. Also gonna load you up with resources. My wife and I have most of our community doing some version of fasting, including my parents, doing some versions of fasting and intermittent fasting as a lifestyle. And we've run into the pitfalls. We've seen what are the pitfalls and, and what are the, t the tips and tricks that get you through it and this kind of stuff. And maybe what kind of fasting would be right for different people. We'll cover that. I'm gonna go through some of the benefits, obviously, that I got, the benefits that are generally seen with fasting talk a little bit about the method of action of autophagy. And then I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna leave you with a lot of resources so that if you wanna pursue any course in this, you can learn as much as you want and demystify this thing for you. When I first was told about fasting, I didn't know what to make of it. In fact, it was at a Dr. Klinghart lecture specifically for Lyme disease. And he brought up this brilliant lady from California, from Southern California, and she gave this lecture. She's a practicing practitioner now out in Orange County. And she talked about how somewhere along the line, she did a 10 day juice fast, which means she just drank, you know, they made organic juices with a juicer. And that's all she consumed for 10 days and half of her symptoms went away. Now, what was fascinating to me about this was two things. One, that I didn't know really much about anything about fasting, but the, the second thing that really struck me was, as we all know with Lyme disease, everybody's got a whole different array of symptoms and this lady had the same like the big symptom list was all mine it was the the buzzing in the ears it was the nervous system shimmers and shakes that internal tremors it was i mean it was literally like blow by blow the major symptoms that i have had going on she did a 10-day juice fast half of those symptoms went away and her thought was well let's do what if i double that do 20 days so she did 20 days and all of her symptoms all of her remaining lyme symptoms were gone I didn't know what to make of this. I didn't know where to put that. I was like, okay, so you drink juice for, for 20 days? You basically do kind of a, a version of the Gerson therapy and all this stuff goes away? Well, that wasn't my experience when I had juicing in there. So, okay, well, what was happening? So I kind of, I, I didn't know what to make of it. So I put it on the back burner. Second time I hear about it, I have a friend with traumatic brain injury. He was given a book that's 100 years old by one of his doctors, and this book is available. There's links in the show notes to all of these things. You can download and read this yourself. Okay, so I read the book published in the early 1900s. And it was phenomenal. It like got, it got me really excited. I went back through my notes about the juice fasting and the Klinghart lecture. There's a great documentary on Amazon and Netflix called The Science of Fasting. And there was an enormous amount of research that's gone into fasting. We know that when you give the body and then give the stomach a break, 
from eating, even if you just miss a meal or two, that would be an intermittent fast, right? Just take a, a meal or two off that the gut starts to repair. In fact, this is the first time in history that we know where every meal is going to come from. We, there's a, you know, there's a restaurant on every corner. There's a drugstore with snacks on every corner. You know, we're told, uh, you know, the hearty breakfast. Don't miss a meal or you're going to die. 99, this is ridiculous. I never eat a big breakfast. You know that. Well, I know that, love, but I just read an article that said breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Everyone should eat a big breakfast. What about breakfast? I've already had it. What about second breakfast? Why hold back? Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, bud. Yeah. Protein bar. It couldn't be more the opposite. It could not be more the opposite. This is the first time in history that we have not taken a break off between meals. We know where every meal is going to come from. The refrigerator is always full. Well, it turns out if you stop eating just for a little bit, all of a sudden your blood sugar starts to reset, right? All of a sudden human growth hormone comes out. All of a sudden autophagy comes in. All these different things. When the body is deprived of these minerals and deprived of this input, the gut starts to heal. Okay, so I'd read this book. I'd heard this lecture. I kind of dove right in. I'll explain why I made my choices later, and I'll explain why you should not do what I did. However, it, the results were still undeniable. Let's start with the benefits that I got from doing a 21-day distilled water fast. Now, keep in mind that I've also had a month and a half off since this time. So it was a month and a half ago that I started refeeding after my fast. So I've had time to see, uh, you know, there might, down the road, some other benefits might come online. Some of these other things may fade. I don't know. So far, this is where we're at. Internal tremors. in Those tremors in my body at night reduced by 90%. Nothing was taking them down. Nothing was affecting them. I mean, meditating for 45 minutes would trigger the reduction. Uh, Auto urine therapy, if you don't know about that, that's an episode I plan on doing. It's not the big frat joke we think. Here, Morty, this will make your urine drinkable. Now can we keep shopping? Auto urine therapy will reset the nervous system and we'll turn those down in 30 seconds. This is permanent, though. This has been amazing. So that's been one of the biggest things. The second biggest thing was my energy levels. My energy levels came way, way back. I don't need naps anymore. I don't have that all-day drunken feeling that I've had for four years. That paint shaker in my brain feeling like when I close my eyes, especially to meditate, when I close my eyes, it's, there's a paint shaker in there. That's what it felt like before. That's gone. It's replaced by peace, peacefulness. Arthritis. <laughs> Holy shit. Arthritis. Wow. In fact, it's been so remarkable that I have what I call the miracle yoga class that followed the fast. Because also, when you, when you finish the fast, human growth hormone comes out. Because you tear everything down with autophagy, and then human growth hormone and massive amounts of stem cell regeneration happen simultaneously. So you just feel on top of the world when you're done with this thing. In fact, it's how Benedict Cumberbatch bulked up for the roles, in Marvel, both in the Marvel movie as Doctor Strange and as Khan in the Star Trek movie. It's not what we thought it was. When you stop eating, it is not what we thought it was. You do not wither and die and turn into little Gandhi. Gandhi was not fasting. Gandhi was starving. That's a very different thing. So what else happened for me? The tinnitus in my ears reduced significantly. Another thing that almost nothing would help with. I think I've mentioned I use a ginkgo biloba extract from New Zealand that reduced the volume uh, a little. It took months to kick in, and then it reduced the volume a little bit. Uh, hyperbaric oxygen has been fantastic at keeping the ringing in my ears out of the red zone. I've stopped both of those things. So since mid-November, I haven't touched any supplements for that stuff. I haven't been into a hyperbaric chamber, any of that stuff. And the ringing in my ears dropped dramatically lower during the fast, raised just a little bit back, but is still mar you know quite a bit lower than where it was before. My gut digestion, my bowel movement, all that kind of stuff, GI function is like a new body as well. In fact, I'm pretty sure, not to get too gross, I'm pretty sure I've never had a healthy poop in my life. <laughs> I didn't know that those hard dog-like poops are not supposed to be what our poops look like. They're supposed to be soft. You could whack them with a stick and they'll blow, blow apart in the toilet. That's how they should be. For the first time in my life, 
I'm having healthy GI function. Hydrochloric acid has been restored. I don't need to supplement with that. Uh, I, I still do things like apple cider vinegar a little bit before a meal, but I don't need to. There were, it's all working again. I've returned to yoga. My multitasking brain comes online more and more every day. In fact, the, what I would say is that when I stopped the fast, that's when the, most of the results really started coming in. When the body had finished breaking down and was now building back up, that's when it would really come back. My innate humor has returned. My wife describes it as that she's getting me back. I mean, I've got more things to say here, but what else do I need to say? My wife feels like she's getting me back. My hands and feet. Not only were they orange all this time, they've been frozen. They've been like embarrassingly cold for so long. They are furnaces now. That's the diabetic neuropathy. That's the insulin resistance going away. And I got the idea for that because of all the beautiful work of Dr. Fung and Megan Ramos up at a Canadian clinic that has been doing primarily work as a nephrologist would on kidneys and diabetes and blood sugar issues. And they've found that all the traditional methods they were using, all the insulin and all the things that they were giving their patients, the diabetic medications, that those pretty much, you know, you spiral down. You keep getting more and more insulin, more and more fat, then you go blind, then your hands and feet have to get cut off and you die this horrible death. And he got really tired of that. So he started fasting his patients. Well, that was four years ago. They now have it down where type two diabetes, they pretty much can lick within four four to six weeks, pretty much. Some of the type one and some of the tougher cases, they can get there in about six months with intermittent fasting. They get the same results, but basically taking that time off from processing food, from inputting food, and from spiking that adre- you know, from spiking that insulin, the body resets, it burns the glycogen stores out, and eventually heals the diabetes, which Lyme people can have. Giving that body a break can bring that back, can bring those insulin levels down, bring that inflammation down in the cells so they can accept the insulin. They're not resistant, which is what that means. And we get all of these things back. So my hands and feet are turning more and more beautifully pink. I've definitely acclimated a lot more to the altitude here in the Mile High City uh, post-fast, which is, of course, very welcome. My anxieties have been replaced by a calmness, lifelong sinus issues. First of all, during the fast, there's no, all your histamine gets reset. They turn, your body completely turns off all the, all the histamine reactions. So it was like having two giant sinuses that I could just breathe through beautifully. And for the most part, that has maintained, although it was pretty miraculous on the thing itself. Sleep cycle reset. Not only is it reset, I'm on circadian rhythms, like it or not, right? I used to be a, a, a late night, you know, I like how Billy Joel said it, that at night, the accountants of the brain go to sleep. And that's when the artisans come out, right? So that has gone away. By pretty much 10 p.m., my eyes want to close. By about 6 a.m., boom, I'm wide awake. I feel rested. I feel rejuvenated. The bags under my eyes, gone. I awake with a natural, restored life positivity. Um, Something that normally I would have to meditate for a very long time to get to is now kind of a natural state for me again. No naps are needed. I can sit in meditations without my back aching. That's more of the arthritic thing that's gone away. So joints and spine continue to heal. And of course, my libido is back. (laughs) In fact, the first week and a half that it came back, I'll leave this to your imagination, but pretty much I went back to how I was when I was a 13-year-old boy. It really resets all of the hormones. Everything comes back online. It's called ghrelin, the hunger hormone. So even cravings go away. And why do they go away? Two reasons. One, the body resets all of those different hormones of which ghrelin and insulin and all these different things are hormones. They get reset. Um, But also because when we're not feeding the body, we're also not feeding the characters that have inhabited the body, right? And when we hear information from all of the top parasitologists, they've been trying to say from the top of their lungs since the 70s that if you have a pulse, you have parasites. And... That is for sure. Oh! Yes, Morty, come on. You're doing it. You're doing it. Should we pull it out? And I'll get to that at the very end. We'll talk about what's next for me with parasites. That's been pretty exciting. So when we fast, we give a chance for the creatures to get starved out to some degree. I think at this point, if you've never done parasite protocols, we do have to get more aggressive. 
but man, it can lighten the load. It can really put you in a different place. In fact, as I mentioned, none of my doctors knew about fasting, but I did finally find one that said, okay, I'll monitor your fast. I found somebody that would, that did a, a bunch of scanning beforehand and then looked at me directly after so we could compare what was the before and after picture of 21 days. Needless to say, she was so blown away that she gave me half of a session for free in order to coach her in her own, starting her own intermittent fasting practice. So she went from not knowing at all to being pretty blown away by what she was seeing in my own body. So fasting has been incredibly well studied, believe it or not, even though we don't hear about it, which makes sense, right? There's all the commercial food companies. They have no incentive to tell you to stop eating or take a break, right? They, everybody wants you not only eating three meals a day or you're gonna die, don't miss a meal, but you have to snack now. So pretty much we're grazing all day long. Well, you know, <laughs> what, what company out there would benefit from telling us not to eat their product? Of course, the answer is no one. But here are the, res the observed scientific results between all the different research that I was looking into from the Russian studies to what's going on in the Canadian clinic of Dr. Fung's to Dr. Kassar's clinic in Hawaii and the irreplaceable work of Dr. Alan Goldhammer at True North Clinic in California. So here are some of the different benefits that have been studied and seen time and time again. That's healing bronchial asthma, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, leaky gut, the cleaning of the cellular machinery, it's anti-cancer, prevention of Alzheimer's, athletes use it for training, reduces brain inflammation, noradrenaline goes up, regeneration of stem cells, removes lipomas, human growth hormone is higher, so when you refeed, your muscle builds faster. The body cleans the junky cells and proteins, resets appropriate hunger levels, removes dangerous fat from around organs, skin tags shrivel, deepens sleep, vision, eczema, speeds healing, enhances immune function, changes how food tastes. This was a big thing for me. Hormones balance, menopause ease, extends life. This is really exciting. Animal studies are showing huge life extension in mice. And while not all animal studies translate to the human the same way, it's still very exciting news. This was a huge one for me personally. In fact, post-fast, I realize, we, we hear this from time to time, I've even mentioned it in other episodes, that we have these cravings, but they're not really our cravings. They're actually, we're sharing all this real estate with pounds and pounds of bacteria and viruses and, of course, parasites and other things. And they are vying for real estate in our consciousness. So they are literally looking as survival mechanism for telling us what foods they need to eat, right? So those cravings that we think we have, whether that's the addictions, the, the sugars, the chocolates, the this or that, those are not our own. And how I know that for sure is my entire attitude towards food has been completely naturally reset post-fast. I don't want any of the same food that I wanted. It's like for the first time, I clearly hear the messages that my body is asking for. What I realized is all of the foods that didn't serve me that I wanted, that I craved, those were probably not my own mind. And I pull out some Fritos corn chips, Dr. Pepper and an old moon pie. Then I sit back in glorious expectation of a genuine junk food high. Most of those might not even have been my own chemical addiction in there. Those were creatures vying for their life, saying, feed me this thing because that's the thing they need, right? It doesn't serve our body at all to have all the sugars and have all these different uh, things going in like that are the toxic and non-GMO'd and junky foods and all this kind of stuff. Yet, we, we crave those things, right? Well, we don't, because once you unload that aspect and you get that ghrelin, that hunger hormone reset, all of a sudden, I hear very clearly what my body wants, or the, maybe the first time that I can remember, I'm hearing what my body clearly wants, and it's very different from any food I've ever wanted before. It wants, you know, obviously I'd lost 20 pounds when I did a 21 day fast. You, lo you lose about a pound a day. Let that sink in, first of all. It's the healthiest way to lose weight. When you're eating, your body puts and turns the insulin on and it goes into a storage mode. So if you're eating, your body thinks you're preparing to go to storage mode and it saves all that food, right? If you stop eating, your body unloads it. It's really simple. It's just like we don't work out all day, right? We work out for a while, and then what do you do? You rest, you let the body restore, and that's the same thing. We just forgot to do that with eating, because all of a sudden, everybody's telling us all these things about how much food we have to have, and wow, it's everywhere, and look how, you know, 
But when you stop eating, then the body can heal from the eating and it can unload some of the, the old toxic storage. So when it did that, all of a sudden I found I wanted basically three things. I wanted tons of fat, obviously, because I'd lost all that weight. Like good fats, like uh, almond butters and coconut oils and avocados and things like that. I also wanted greens. For the first time, I was actually starting to really crave like greens and all these veggies and things. And then fermented foods. Again, these were, this is not <laughs> normal. <laughs> I'm just like the rest of you for the, you know, I wanted the this or that or the hamburger or the french fries or whatever, even, even though I haven't been really eating that way for a long time. But this totally changed my attitude towards food. Completely different. Completely different. And in fact, I've gained a lot of the weight back that I lost, and now my body is telling me different signals. It no longer wants some of the fats that it wanted. It's really cool. It's for the first time I really feel like I'm hearing clearly what's going on with the body. Other benefits that people have reported, autonomic balance in the body, thyroid function, AFib, diabetes, leg swelling, sleep apnea, gastritis, thyroid issues, osteoporosis, osteopenia, cardiovascular disease, lupus, psoriasis, a ton of autoimmune diseases fall into this category. I mentioned asthma, ulcerative colitis, ankylosing spondylitis. So those are things that have been studied or observed in clinical settings as a result of fasting. If you have listened or spent any time researching the world of parasites and bacteria, you realize that when we give the gut a break, not only do we heal that gut permeability, that leaky gut, right, which is where all those allergies and food sensitivities come from, which turn into autoimmune in the body, right? Well, that heals, and then the autoimmune is gone, plus we have all the creatures we have. We start to lower the bacterial and pathogenic load in our body, and then we hear those signals nice and clearly. Let's distinguish between three major types of fasts that most of us have heard about. So we've heard about intermittent fasting. That's where you take off, you can skip as much, just a single meal. That's an intermittent fast. You've given your stomach a very short break, okay? Um, there are great different, you, know, you can find lots of different videos about this, but basically an intermittent fast could look a million different ways. A way that I like doing it, and this is, this is a lifestyle that I will continue forever. I absolutely love it. So for me, an intermittent fast is basically anything that's sort of south of a couple of days off at a time, at the, at the longest break from food. On a daily basis, that might mean eating within a window. Eating within a window from noon to eight, perhaps, every day of the week. That gives that body that great rest between starting up the food the next day at noon and taking the break from the night before gives it a lot of chance to heal, a lot of chance for the insulin to come down. And then I also include two days. So on the weekend, I don't eat anything. That I do a distilled water fast through the whole weekend, through every weekend right now. And ironically, when you do that, not only do you not get weaker, I feel better. In fact, those are the two best feeling days of the whole week usually, are the days that I don't eat on the weekend. That would be intermittent fasting. Anything where you take these short little breaks and then food is back in there. What is juice fasting? So juice fasting, I'm going to define as not having any solid food and only consuming juice, like plant juice, like vegetable juices and fruit juices. Any of those kind of juices like you would think of in the Gerson juicing method where you have pounds and pounds of vegetables turn into juice. So you're not, your body is getting a break from eating. However, you're still getting calories, you're still getting sugars, you're still getting tons and tons of micronutrients are going into the body. So it's not deprived at all. You're just giving your digestive process a chance to rest, okay? So that could be extended. There's a, there's a movie on Amazon Prime called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. It's a great movie about an Australian that does a 60-day juice fast. So again, he's not eating anything else, but he is putting lots and lots of juice in. I kind of think of a juice fast as it can be very, very, very appropriate for many, many people. So people that can't handle a longer fast right away, which nobody should, right? We have never fasted maybe before in our entire lives. Some people, they skip a meal or two and they're losing consciousness and they can't, you know what I mean? There's, they literally have such bad blood sugar issues, which by the way, is also, like I said, diagnostic. It's telling you, if you can't skip a meal without losing your shit, you need fasting more than you know, right? 60% of the top 10 
causes of death are related to blood sugar, right? And that's all of the major diseases, those cancers and everything else. Those are all related to insulin resistance and blood sugar problems. So a juice fast is a very, very gentle way of fasting. So we've got the intermittent fasting, which is maybe taking meals off here and there or eating in a structure that gives us a small break from time to time. There's juice fasting, which is days, weeks, months, however long you want to do it, where you aren't eating, but you're just doing the juice. And then there's pure fasting. And this is where you get into autophagy. So until further research is done, we don't know what minerals we put in our body that trigger an insulin response. So until then, the distilled water method is the only way that we know for sure to deprive the body of enough incoming minerals, nutrients, calories, and that kind of thing, where the body feels like it has to switch fuel sources, right? So since we've been feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding, the body's running on insulin and sugar, right? Well, when you stop eating, and when nothing goes into your body, not juice, not anything else, in the first 24 to 48 hours, you've burned off all of your glycogen stores. You've burned off all of that insulin through the whole body, right? And then your body goes into a process on days three and four where it switches fuel sources, and this leads to autophagy. The body has three fuels, glucose, fats, and proteins. The essential fuel is glucose, which the body absolutely needs in order to function. The brain cannot do without it. But after a day of fasting, the glucose supply is exhausted. How does the organism adapt? It soon makes glucose from protein, and particularly from that found in the muscles. It'll also draw on its reserves of fat to create a substitute for glucose. This fasting fuel is known as ketone bodies. It is these ketone bodies that will be the main food supply for the brain. The work is done by the liver, which is a real factory for transformations in the body. This switching of fuel sources goes to ketogenic, right? And this is the big rage, the ketogenic diet, and oh my God, ketogenic is the best thing to do for cancer and everything else. Your body naturally does it if you stop feeding it. It naturally goes into ketosis and it starts burning your fat and that's how you lose all this fat. Not only is it the best method, just as an aside, for, for losing weight, if you are dramatically obese, you can fast for, you know, basically do the math, like a pound a day, if you're 100 pounds overweight, like you can go for a very long time and safely have enough fuel in your body to cover that spread. You will burn all of that weight a pound to two off a day and your gallbladder won't have the problem processing all that. It is literally the safest way to lose weight. And again, the clinic up in Canada, that's really where they started was, was as a weight loss and diabetic prevention place. So when you starve the body, it does that, where it switches fuels, it says, okay, we're burning sugar, we're burning sugar. Well, God, we burn it all out. Well, that's great. That's what we want. We've never done that maybe before in our life. If we've never stopped eating, we've never done that before. When you stop eating, then it says, okay, well, let's switch to this fuel that's in the body and start burning that, right? And then you bought and your body goes into that ketosis. That also is where autophagy is triggered. And autophagy, as I mentioned before, is the self-healing mechanism of the body where it scrapes out all the bad proteins, where it really cleans out the body and you lose all of this fat from not just, not just thighs and butt and this kind of stuff, literally everything. Like all of my clothes, so even though it looked like I've gained a lot of the weight back, the clothes that I just bought, the skinny jeans that I bought, they look like 90s baggy pants now on me. Like it's incredible. Like it's, my fingers are leaner than they were. Like it's really interesting. It comes off you know, universally from the body and including from all of the organs where fat isn't supposed to be around anyway. The dangerous fat burns all of that off. It's absolutely beautiful, miraculous, and healing. So those are the differences between the intermittent fasting, the juice fasting, and the fasting. Now, one other thing I would say is going back to juice fasting, a lot of people, in fact, as I related to you, the first time I heard about fasting at all, really, that it, that it kind of clicked for me, was that report by the lady who did the 20-day juice fast and had all of her symptoms go away. So people are reporting very similar results even without doing the full distilled water fast. 
even though intermittent fasting cumulatively may give you similar results to juice fasting and to distilled water fasting to complete abstinence from food that essentially it's a length of time thing so you've got your intermittent fasting which will probably get you very similar results but might take a lot longer it might take months or years to get you there weeks months or years whereas you can do you know these juice fasts and really move things along but the juice fasting would be gentle and then the distilled water fasting would be profoundly impactful. And there are a few things that only that method of total abstinence from all minerals will accomplish in the body. There are mechanisms that turn on after the first week, after the next 10 days, after the next, you know what I mean? This kind of thing. So for instance, in order to get to the point where the body clears out all of the problems, the microorganisms that are causing the arthritic condition and the inflammation in the joints and that kind of thing, that can take 10 to 12 days of distilled water fasting usually. That's, that mechanism comes online after that. So, so there are different benefits to each. Now, if you've never done anything, you never want to do what I did. You never want to jump into the heavy duty, sustained, you know, distilled water fasting. I would not recommend that for anybody. It is miserable. That mechanism is so rusty in our body. We've never used it before. I'm this far along in life and just turned it on for the first time. Of course it's rusty. Every time I, every week that goes by when I do more and more intermittent fast and take the two days off on the weekends gets easier and easier. And the tips and tricks that I, that I got from listening to the fasting talk podcast by the Canadian clinic, I don't need those anymore. Like within a couple of weeks, I didn't need those. Those were all of a sudden things that were unnecessary because the rust had come off of that mechanism. It was functioning. My body was remembering how to self clean. It was remembering to switch from insulin into ketosis it was doing all of these things very easy and very cleanly and that came along with practice but again intermittent fasting would be the place that everyone can start so anyone that wants to do a distilled water fast if you've never done any fasting it's going to be miserable your body's going to have to fight through all of those changes and learn how to do all that stuff on the fly you're probably going to discover that your adrenals don't work because by the way if we've been doing this our whole life then when you fast, you should feel better. There's a great thing that Dr. Fung says, which is basically, we think about our history. We wouldn't be here without fasting. So this makes sense because if you are a caveman and it's winter and there's no food, you can't shut down your metabolism because then every day is going to get harder to go out and hunt that rabbit. So your body, again, is just not that stupid, right? What it does is it switches fuel sources and then pumps up your energy so you can go out and hunt that woolly mammoth, right? So that's how we survive. When you stop eating, you should come to life. Noradrenaline comes out. Like I mentioned, human growth hormone, all these beautiful things come out. This is how Thor looks like Thor in the new Marvel movie. This is how, this is what the celebrities in Hollywood know about. They know about this stuff. If you're working out at one of these high-end places, they're probably implementing intermittent fasting and different fasting protocols because it's the best way to beef up, right? Your body producing human growth hormone after day two, like if you stop eating for two days, when you intermittent fast, it peaks at 24 hours. So make sure you work out the second day. You will get bigger and buffer for sure. So it's, once again, it's, it, it's a whole switch that we were told the opposite, right? We starve ourselves, we're going to deplete, die, and turn into a little raisin. It's not at all the case, and there are so many beautiful reasons for that. So why did I choose a 21-day distilled water fast right out of the gate with very little intermittent fasting beforehand. I'd only done it maybe three times. So why did I choose that? I made my decision because of a number of factors. First of all, I'm a little crazy. <laughs> Second of all, it was coming into the holiday season. As a musician and as somebody that works in the music world, nobody's gonna miss you. That industry goes to sleep from December through January. We weren't booking shows, I wasn't licensing music. No one was gonna notice my absence because I was pretty much planning based on all of the things I was seeing online, the different clinics in, in Costa Rica that were doing the, the sustained water fasts from the Earther Academy in Hawaii, talking about the experience that those people have had for Lyme disease. Down in Costa Rica, there's another guy down there. I looked at the work of Dr. Goldhammer in California, obviously the clinic up in Canada. I was gathering all this information and seeing what were the pitfalls, what were people running into, what were the healing crises that they were having, when they were going through this distilled water fast, specifically for Lyme, 
right? And there were there were crazy stories of people's lymph nodes like swelling up behind their ears the size of golf balls. And then of course going down and healing. Just like anything, we know when you treat for Lyme, you're gonna run into things that get worse before they get better. Arthritis, when you distill water fast, if you have arthritis, it's gonna get acutely worse for 24 to 48 hours and then it's gonna retreat, right? So I was seeing all these things and I knew I could sort of mentally handle it, not only mentally, but biologically. Like I have a living room full of beautiful healing devices. I basically have a clinic in my living room, right? I've got all these Rife machines. I have tools and toys and I know lots of great stuff to, to help me through that kind of thing. Not to mention, fasting is voluntary. You can stop at any time, right? Again, not what Gandhi was doing. Gandhi was political starving himself. He was going for years and years and blah, 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 you know, withering to nothing. That's not what we're doing. We're saying, okay, at any time I can refeed and stop this whole process if it's not right for me, if it's too tough. I'd basically looked at all that and I kind of had a pretty good sense of what I was gonna be in for. Not to mention, like I said, having that kind of lull in the music industry through the holidays. And there are some other concerning factors in my family, some health issues that, that require my attention. And the results I was seeing from the distilled water fasting for Lyme disease were so impressive across the board. They were so impressive that I wanted, I actually knew that I wanted to jump into this because it's time for me to get back into life. It's time for me to be available to my family for some of the stuff that's going on. And I'm happy to report that it really did a lot of the heavy lifting, a lot of the stuff that wasn't getting cleared out with other therapies, and it moved me into a very different treatment spot. It moved me into a very different treatment spot. So that was why I chose it. And again, I would never ever recommend anyone do that. If you intermittent fast, if you did that for months, or even just weeks, do intermittent fasting, practice that. Have, you know, days where you take half the day off, and then days, you know, build up. There are methods that you can look at up in the, the fasting clinic up in Canada, how they do that. Take a meal off. If you're going to pass out, then that's tough. You know, just keep trying to take one meal off. That's your body's got to heal each little piece, right? And then you do that until it's okay, until it's not a big deal to skip a meal and then two meals and then maybe a day and then two days, right? And, you know, have these little short fasts and you're not dying and all the little stuff is healing as you go, right? Your blood sugars are balancing out. Your insulin is coming down. Your all these different, uh, your adrenals are coming back to life. Your thyroid might be coming back to life. But the first time you do it, those things are probably not working very well, especially if you're chronically ill and it's going to suck. So you just, you work through those a little bit at a time. You build that muscle, you dust the rust off, and then you have the opportunity to do a more extended distilled water or some kind of block fast like that and get through that without having, you know, in your, if, if your adrenals, for instance, are repaired, before you do a fast, then when noradrenaline kicks in, you should feel really good. You should feel pretty good during during some extended fasting. That would be the preferred method for most people is to take time, build up, get comfortable with it. There's no reason to, to hammer yourself the way I did because the actual experience that I had of fasting was miserable, miserable. Now I was never miserable doing the intermittent fasting. That wasn't a big deal. But when I got into the sustained fasting, it was miserable, but not for the reasons you'd think of it's exactly. Like most people think, oh, I could be so hungry and angry and da 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 da, -da and blood sugar. That stuff, there's great tips and tricks for. Things like Himalayan salt under the tongue because the body sometimes dumps, you know, or needs more of that uh, magnesium and some of the salt. Um, but Himalayan pink sea salt under the tongue seems to give the body what it needs. Even sometimes when you think you're hungry, you're really just thirsty. So I always would start, well, give myself a little more water. Is that doing it? Well, no. Give myself Pellegrino, the sparkling bubbles and all that kind of make you feel a little bit full. Is that is that helping it? Well, if that's not, then move to bone broth. So there are these different strategies that that eventually they can kind of pause maybe some of the results you're getting, but they don't break the fast. They're, they're just little crutches that you can use to kind of get through until your body's more facile. I was using a lot of those tips during the 21 day distilled water fast. So there were times when I would implement some of those, but as I've said now, as I've used intermittent fasting as a sustainable part of my life, I need those tips less and less and less. And in fact, last few weeks, not at all. It's just when I want to eat, I'm hungry and I don't want to eat. There's nothing. There's nothing I have to work out. The body is ready to go. As I mentioned, we have a large portion of our immediate community fasting around us now. We have pretty much everybody that I talk to fasting to some level or giving or attempting to fast. And so I've been seeing a lot of what we run into, um, a lot of the problems and these kind of things. 
Let me give you as much as I can about that, because one of the big things people say is, okay, well, I've never done well with fasting. Whenever I stop eating, even if I try just to miss a single meal, then, you know, I'm, my blood sugar crashes, I'm, I'm dizzy, I'm this and that. Well, okay, going back to one of the first things I said, fasting is diagnostic. If you can't miss a meal without being, feeling terrible, then you need it more than you know. Because that's the blood sugar issues, that's the thyroid, that's the adrenals, that's any of those things or all of those things playing into where, where they should be compensating for the fact that there's no incoming food and all of a sudden you're miserable and lightheaded and all this, then short answer is you've just diagnosed that you're one of those percent of people that are either diabetic or pre-diabetic. So we are in that category. And what heals that? Intermittent fasting, right? Practicing little by little. Skip a meal, feel better. You know, skip a meal until you don't miss that meal, until the body's not, a, until it's not a big deal. So if that's really difficult, then maybe juice fasting is a good slower way for you to ease in and try something like the Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead documentary talks about, where instead of not eating anything, you implement the juice in there. Historically, people believe the only true fast is a water fast. I found out that well over 90% of the populations worldwide are malnourished. And that here in Western countries with great affluence, we often have more malnourishment than do third world countries per capita. One would say, how is that possible? Well, not everyone in the third world country is starving. And those people that are not are eating healthy, whole food diets. And so if one is fasting and they already are malnourishment, having malnourishment, it's a problem. So water fasting is not something we consider viable for almost anyone in the 21st century. We're considering juice fasting as being the best for you. Now, when we say juice fasting here at Hippocrates, it's obviously not fruit juice, the ones that you'd prefer having. It's green juice. And those green juices made out of the best organic green vegetables and sprouts. Why? They provide the most nutrition, the most balance. They also help the blood sugar to regulate. Try that. Try that for the intermittent fasting. And then when that gets easy, take the juice away. Try the intermittent fasting. When that gets easy, extend the intermittent fasting. And when that, you know, as the extensions get easier and easier, then maybe a block fast is something that you could do on your own at home. And by the way, all, all these clinics around the world, and I'll mention everything, they're all in the show notes. You can contact them. Even True North has a free consultation. These are places you can go and they'll plug you right into a block fast. They'll monitor you. They'll make sure your body has what it needs. They'll keep you out of danger zone. They'll do all that stuff. But essentially, if you wanted to do it on your own, you could use these other tools to build up and get to some of these places where there's not as much danger of those kind of reactions that people are mentioning when they're in the clinic in Hawaii or Costa Rica. So again, if fasting is tough, if taking a break from even a single meal is tough, you need it. If your cravings you think are out of control, you need it. Um coffee addictions, all these different things. In fact, some of the best way to beat addiction is to do fasting. It will reset that. As I mentioned before, sometimes it's not even you that wants it. It's probably certainly not your body that's asking for things contraindicated for it. Uh, we're involved in clinical trials. Right now we're doing a trial looking at taste rotation. We were actually able to show that the pe patient's palate actually changes in their perception to salt, to sugar and becoming much more sensitive, which may explain why the food may be disgusting, tasteless slime before people fast, but after fasting, it actually tastes quite good. And it's not the food that changes, it's the palate. And so the palate itself changes. It does it like with healthy eating, for example, salt. Most people are addicted to very highly salted foods. If you eat a low salt diet for about a month, the palate adapts. It turns out that same adaptation happens a little more quickly. If you, if you do it fasting. And this study is designed to quantify that and take a look at that in detail. It's the critters that we don't want in our bodies that are asking for those things. That tells me that I have probably some parasites left. And in fact, that's exactly what I've been doing since the fast is getting into parasite protocols. And that was another topic where every doctor said parasites are not playing a major role in your health. Parasites are not, maybe you have an intestinal parasite, but probably not a big deal. Okay, well, I finally found a protocol that's pulling them out. I have not had a single bathroom visit that is unexciting in three and a half weeks since finding the proper protocol. 
I have to mention this. The, the book also agrees with me on this. This is Dr. J. Davidson's new book. I have no connection to these guys. I think everybody should get this book, especially if you're starting out with Lyme disease. This is, first of all, look how tiny it is. And it's brilliant. It's beautiful. It's everything you need to know to get started with Lyme disease, to get a good overview with it. But it's the Mimosa pudica seed is also mentioned in there. And that brings out all these big cre creatures and critters. And when we unload those things that are stealing our nutrition, and when I, when I think back about, as a child, I had asthma, I had annual bronchitis, I had an ulcer in my early teens, like in junior high. I mean, you don't get that. You don't have those things without parasites. Those are parasite symptoms. Let's leave you with some different resources so you can feel empowered to find out as much as you want to about this topic. Maybe start trying some intermittent fasting. The book that I mentioned is free. It's online, so there's a link to that in the show notes. Search the word autophagy. Look at any video by Dr. Jason Fung. That's a great place to start. If, you're, if you like getting information from videos like this, watch the Dave Asprey, Dr. Jason Fung interview or the Mercola interview with Dr. Jason Fung. You can look up anything by Dr. Alan Goldhammer. Pretty much in the English speaking world, as far as I can tell, he may be one of the, the authorities on this topic. Dr. Kassar, as I mentioned, out at the Earther Academy in Hawaii. The book, The Complete Guide to Fasting, which is co-authored by Dr. Jason Fung. One of the greatest things that I've heard, and I think it's one of the most generous clinical experience podcast, is the Fasting Talk podcast from the Canadian Clinic. That is Dr. Jason Fung's clinic. The podcast mostly features Megan Ramos, who primarily oversees most of the fasting protocols with the clientele. So she knows everything they're running into. She knows all the numbers, all the things that you can measure, the, the, where I got most of the tips and tricks and things were from what they're doing and what they're seeing. And they are having phenomenal success now for over four years with this stuff. That podcast is absolutely amazing. Very, very generous with their information. I listened to that literally every day when I was going through the fast. It kept me motivated. It was just a brilliant, brilliant thing to put in. It was like having a little personal cheerleader in my ear every day. So what's left of my healing is the internal tremors, which tells me, hey, we still have some Borrelia, we still have some Babesia, we still have a couple of those guys in the hierarchy playing on my, my nervous system, playing on my immune system. Some of the aches in my body have come back just a little tiny bit. I mean, just a fraction of what they were compared to. But I'm not so sure that I didn't hurt myself by overexerting after I came out of the fast because I started feeling so good I could return to yoga. And I was so excited. And I frankly think I pushed it a little too hard. I consider that a win. I consider that still a good thing. I just didn't listen to my body enough not to push it that far. But I think some of the, most of that healing has been happening. I can, my joints feel differently. My, my, my hips, which were really, really suffering from pain and from discomfort, they're, they're like new. It's like having a new body. In fact, I call it the miracle yoga class. And I totally joy cried. <laughs> I'm a big tough guy. But yeah, I joy cried during a yoga class because it was like literally being in a new body that didn't crackle and click and, and hurt and be painful. It was really... It was kind of miraculous to be in the body. You know, I wonder, if I could go back in time, knowing what I know now about intermittent fasting, about correct, really robust parasite treatments, and if I would have implemented those at the very beginning, the very onset of the worst symptoms, I just wonder how much time, energy, suffering, money, money, <laughs> money that I would have saved over the last four and a half years. All I know is that nothing that I've done in four and a half years has shown more rapid progress with more symptoms, brought back more energy, more life, more love, more like peace. It's just, it's so cool. So that's it on fasting. I'm sure there are other questions. Hopefully the resources in the links in the show notes below will get you started if you want to investigate more of this. It's a topic I just absolutely, as you can tell, have become enamored with. Um, there, if there are other questions and things, big parts of the topic that I haven't covered, 
let me know and maybe there will be future episodes on this as well. In the meantime, if you like the show, if you want to support it, there are easy ways to do that. All of the music in the background is my own. It's all available on iTunes. Anything you buy does contribute to the show, so that's an easy way. Also, you can donate for as little as a dollar a month. Those links uh, for PayPal and such are in the show notes below. Again, thank you so much for listening. I hope this was a beneficial topic for you. I can't wait to hear some of the stories that you guys have going through this, and maybe there's other episodes we'll need to do in the future on this topic. Until next time, be well. Thanks for watching. Hello. Oh, wow. What is wrong with you? Oh, well, I've been fasting for three days, so I probably look good. You haven't eaten anything for three days? And I feel great. Why the hell are you fasting? Well, I thought I would get into the spirit of the religious aspect of what mm -hmm. we got That's going on. That's because we here. said his face looks fat. It is not. I, p people have been fasting for thousands face of years fat. for health, Jesus and fat. Moses, in the woods fat, right? and in the desert. Fat. And religious purposes, Moses... Fat face.